All right, everybody. So welcome to the Real Estate of Mind show, where we help everyday people create wealth through real estate investing. I am your host, Glenn Schwarm. So I am flying solo today. Most of the time, you're used to hearing me out here with my beautiful wife and business partner, Amber. But she's out smelling the tulips literally today. So she's out enjoying the day today. So we have a, nice another very special guest on here today. And I believe you're from Arizona, right, Steve? Phoenix. So uh, I want to introduce Steve Trang to everybody. Welcome, Steve. We're glad to have you today. Thank you for having me. This is a blast. Yeah. So tell us about you. I, I, I've done a little research on you and I, I like what I see. I think we have very similar uh, goals and alignments and whatnot. So tell me about you, kind of where you're from and, and what you do in real estate or what you do personally. And we'll start there. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I'm in a Phoenix market and, you know, uh, the joke uh, I made a couple of times, maybe in poor taste, I don't know. Uh, we are the guru capital of the world. <laughs> uh, and so I, started you know getting interested in, in real estate back in you know 2005 2006 after like everybody else reading rich dad poor dad tried to buy some rental properties thank god our loans got denied because you know things started go taking a nosedive got licensed in 2007 played that game still in it right i'm a licensed broker oh licensed as a regular as a as a traditional broker so uh, so I've been doing, you know, traditional real estate for 13 years, uh, but along the way in trying to become a successful agent, we started buying houses. Uh, we had our program, your home sold guaranteed or all buy it. And people wanted us to just buy their houses. And then I said, no, you don't want me to buy your house. And they said, no, we want you to buy our house. And I said, okay, but the offer is a lot lower and they didn't mind. And so I started buying houses, not because I wanted to, but because people really wanted the guaranteed cash offer. And this is back around 2012. Okay. And after a few houses, you run out of money because it's only so much cash that you have uh, between friends and family. So I started wholesaling. And um, so I've been wholesaling, flipping, uh, doing the traditional thing um, for quite some time, for over seven years. Yeah. And um, I started my podcast two years ago, which is, you know, awesome for you have, for having a podcast. It's, that just opened a whole new door for me because I'm the same person I was two years ago, but now I'm relevant. It's just really funny how that works. It, it is funny, right? No, I know exactly what you mean. Now, let me back up a little bit. So, so Arizona, so we're in upstate New York, very, um, <clears throat> what do I want to say, almost a protected market. So we started back in 2007. Uh, bought our first house, flipped it. Um, that's what we. That's how we sort of built our empire and wealth. What we do, and so we we built it during that first recession. But but we never had the major ups and downs of real estate prices. And I think gotcha. that you're in a market that had that and has that. Right? You had these big spikes oh, where you can. We're a roller coaster. Killer, right? You can make killer money in a month, but then you can also lose killer money in a month. Right? Oh yeah. So I started. Like, I actually got licensed in May of 2007. And I remember, like, it sucked. The first year and a half and as a realtor, it sucked. It was terrible. Um, <laughs> but I remember working with clients, and we were buying houses for thirty to 50000 And I was thinking, I wish I had money because I know this is not going to last. And those houses they bought for thirty to 50000 are worth over 200000 today, right? And so all I kept telling myself is I need to be ready for the next recession. And yeah. everything I've been doing is getting myself ready for the next recession. We thought this was it. I don't really know if this is it. Who knows? Yeah, I know. I'll, I got more. I want to ask you about that later, but I want to know more about what you. So you're so you're doing traditional deals. Do you have a brokerage or just yourself, or how do you? What do you do? Oh, uh, so we have a brokerage with about 120 agents. 120. Uh, that's big. Okay. Yeah. So we have a, almost one percent market share. So uh, for 2019, out of every 135 houses that sold. We were involved in one of them. Oh, so that's great. Almost market share. Yeah, it's kind of crazy to think about. Um, and so, yeah, we've got the brokerage that we started that in January of 13. Yeah. And we're, we're, we're chugging along. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. So how much of your business is wholesaling? And like, do you do you buy any rentals now? Do you do kind of what's your what's your play there on the investing side? So we only have two rentals um, and we should have more, you know, like the. Everyone says leverage, 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 right? That's what all the book said. Sure. And, you know, that's what we learned from Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And then you witness what happens when everyone leverages. Yeah. And those same guys that are buying houses for thirty to 50000 I got to know a few, hang out with some of them. 
And I saw what true wealth looks like. True wealth is buying houses cash yeah. and just cash flowing crazy with every single property. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what's going on. If you own them free and clear, there's no market that can hurt you. And so the two properties we own, we own them free and clear. Okay. And so I had a primary residence that we were free and clear. We upgraded in November. Um, and so my goal or my plan is to pay off this house. And once I, once I pay off this house, then we're going to start buying properties again. Yeah. Okay, great. So, yeah, so your market, um, actually, yeah, so let me ask something personal about you. I noticed on one of your, I was doing some research on you, like I want to for our guests. And I noticed that you were an, you're an engineer at tra oh, yeah. tra right? Yeah. I have to tell you, in all of my workshops I do, I always will say, who's an engineer? And if two people, I, I always go, this is going to hurt because it's not an exact science, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely. So I'm surprised. <laughs> well, you know, what's funny about that is I just never fit in. Uh, so oh, I've always okay. been an odd duck. Every personality test I've taken, just a weirdo, you know? Uh, so <laughs> if you look at my disc profile, I'm an SD. That that's a different that's not, a different one, right? Yeah, that's different. Yeah. It's okay. not normal. So um I was an engineer by default because I was good at math. That's the only reason why I went down engineering. Like I didn't know what I wanted to do in college, like everyone that starts college. Yeah. But I'm good at math. Engineering pays well. Let's give it a shot. Yeah. And I did it and um uh, actually ended up with a master's degree in electrical engineering. Um and I worked for three and a half years. But man, it was not fulfilling. No one well, I would say no one, but I would imagine ninety-nine percent of engineers do not feel fulfilled, right? It's just, yeah, yeah. Um, they, and and I actually people. enjoyed it. <laughs> it's like it, I actually it enjoyed it in college. Oh, you did? You did enjoy it in college? I enjoyed it in college, but once you get to the real world, you can't create your own baby. You can't do like you and I. We're business owners. We make our babies, right? Yeah, like true. we know what we want, and we get to make it. Uh, as an engineer, you don't get to make anything. You get to make a contributor and a tiny part right and you don't really even get to decide on that stuff right you got yeah uh, you got um, architects you got everyone telling you what your your, your uh, restrictions are your confinements and you can't make too many changes because you make too many changes and it breaks the company loses a billion dollars yeah I bet, so, that, I bet you're very strange in that. Like, like in, you're very strange. In, I'm not saying you're very strange. You're very strange yeah. in the fact, let me finish my sentence. You're very strange in the fact that you are an engineer, but you also run a successful brokerage and you're a real estate investor. That's, that's not something that I typically see. And I've been teaching people for you know, a dozen years here. It's just not yeah. usually, it's just not, they don't usually go together. They're kind of oil and water. They don't. They don't. And so I didn't fit in. And uh, I noticed that even uh, in, in graduate school, because like I was competing to get to grad school uh, to get I went to UCSD to get to UCSD from another country. Like you have to be one of the best in, from your country. Right. So like, you know, you're competing against India's all stars, Taiwan, uh, sure. Korea, like the best of the best from other countries. Yeah. Whereas I was like one of the best from ASU. OK. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like it's not something that you can brag about. And right. so um, once I got there, I, I learned. The, the power of, of American uh, uh, persistence yep. and application. Like we're, you know, you learn a lot about how different cultures operate. So those guys knew everything about every single detail, right? And I didn't, like they were just, they just knew more than I did. Yeah. But when it came time to put things together to solve problems, American ingenuity won. And so yeah. uh, for me, I've always been a great problem solver. I might not know everything, every detail about everything, but I can understand how it all pieces together faster than most other people can. I tell you, that's a great skill for all of us and all of our listeners to know too, is that you've got to, you got to be a problem solver. I and mean, that's great that you said that. Cause that's on my door. I have uh, so I'm, 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 my wife and I are scuba divers. So on my door, it says, you know, shark diver and uh, chief firefighter or something like that. You know, it's been on there for many years, but I'm putting out fires all the time, but really I'm solving problems, right? That putting out fires where I'm right. solving problems. And that's, that's what we get you know, paid you for. Build your company, the higher you get, you're hopefully fixing better problems than when you first start. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But they're bigger problems. More sometimes. challenging problems. What's that? More challenging problems because they're people problems now. Very true. Yeah, that gets way more complex, doesn't it? It's mm -hmm. just, just flipping a house or something. That's different. So what do you think yeah. sets you apart? I mean, you're in a you're in a really competitive market in Phoenix. So how, how do you set yourself apart as that large broker and owning a you know that that big of a market share 
how do you set yourself apart? What do you do? Because obviously you're doing something right. Um, so I'm very passionate about personal development. Um, you know, I don't know if I spent, I, I don't know if I've crossed 300,000 yet, but I think after CG, I, I probably did. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so I've invested in myself, uh, tremendously. So, um, I've, and I didn't start until about 2011, you know, investing in myself, like the first four years, like when I graduated college, when I worked at Intel, they're like, Hey, go take the seven habits, of highly effective people class. Like now I don't need it. Go take this uh, how to win friends and influence people class. No, I don't. Like these are free courses offered when I worked at Intel. I was like, ah, I'm good, right? That 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 um, uh, borderline arrogance yeah. did not serve me well my first four years uh, as as a realtor. Uh, but then eventually, life has a way of teaching you lessons. Yeah. You you learn some humility, and along the way, I realized that I had to uh, learn to invest in myself. And so I would say what segment sets me apart is that I've probably invested in myself more than 99% of the people in our industry. Yeah. So it's funny. I'm going to ask you at the end, I'm going to ask you because, because this is, we, we call our show a real estate of mind and in our, mm -hmm. you know, we're investors and we're coaches and all that. And in our coaching, we, we put on the home flipping workshop and our, our main company that sponsors that is called Vester Pro. And our tagline is a real estate of mind. And so that yeah. is, we, we do that because, you know, we're also in New York, it's kind of a New York state of mind, the playoff Billy Joel song, you know, yeah. but it's really, we believe so strongly that if you don't have this straight in your head, if you don't have your thoughts right and you're, you're not in the right place, you'll never be able to manifest wealth in your life. You just oh, can't, no, no, you no. know that you, you're living oh, yeah. that, you're living proof of that right now. Right. And oh, I yeah, love that you so. said, I love that you said a little bit of arrogance, because I think all of us that are business owners have a little bit of arrogance, right? We have a little bit of yeah. Especially once we have a couple, a little bit of success. If we do something and make a big five figure or six figure deal or multi six figure deal, we're thinking, well, I got it figured out. But life has a way of just knocking you right back on your ass, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think there's about nine different times in my career where I've, I've said to myself, I think I finally got it. Yeah. And then something changed. Yeah. Whenever you say that, that's the that's the kiss of death, right? Whenever you oh, say, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got it figured out, it's like the world goes, oh, yeah, <laughs> just knock you oh, right 100%. out. Out of left field. <laughs> hey, in the middle, I want to make sure I make sure everyone knows how to get a hold of you. We're not done yet, but I want to make sure. Yeah. Tell people how they can find you and connect with you. Please tell them all that. Yeah, the best way is on Instagram at steve.trang, S-T-E-V-E dot T-R-A-N-G. Uh, or you can find me on Facebook. That's probably where I'm the most active. Um, and YouTube, right? I, we put everything out on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify. That's where we put all our, our, our content out. Awesome. Great, awesome. So we talked about the volume, your your team size. We talked about that. You are you doing a lot of wholesaling or mostly traditional? Now you mentioned wholesaling. Let's talk about that. Do you do a lot of that? Yeah. So we're not a big big wholesale. You know, like last year. Uh, so that's application. I had these numbers uh, for Leon. Uh, so in 2019, we did 20. Uh, we did 34 flips slash hotels slash wholesales. Okay. And it was 100% wholesale. So we're not the biggest, right? Uh, but we, we do enough. Um, and then the brokerage is, is on its own. I spent, uh, it's funny, I was at an event and, and uh, it was Chris Root's event and he was talking about how he hates the four hour work week. And, and then the question came up was like, well, you know, you've got all these different businesses. How do you manage it? I was like, well, I spent about four hours a week on my brokerage, about four hours a week on my wholesale operation, uh, about four hours a week podcast. <laughs> so, all these other businesses they all run on a on, on a four hour work week. Yeah. Okay. That's how you that's how you're able to manage it. So how many so tell people how many businesses you manage them? Three, four, five? What or do you have other little sub businesses you're running or what's so we got the brokerage, we got yeah. my traditional uh, real estate because we all you know have clients. Sure. Uh we got the wholesale operation. Uh I got a title company. Yeah. Uh we got a wholesaling app. Uh we got the podcast. And then I run my own uh, sales training program. Okay. So, yeah. So, it's, I think it's important that people talk, like Amber and I, we run five businesses now. We're talking about title company. It's so funny how I think it all starts to grow. Like when you start your, you have a core business. So, you started out being a, an agent, right? That you started building that. And then you started, obviously, you grew there pretty quickly. And then things, if if you're smart like us, you must you must have a component in your personality trait that's a visionary. You've got to have that. Oh, 100%. 100%. So, because we, you can't, we, as we can't sit still too long, right? We have to, it's like we build something and go, that's working, that's working, but 
uh, all right, what's over here? <laughs> what's the shiny yeah. object, right? So, um, yeah, I was in strategic coach, which I think is also in a great coaching program. Um, and uh, Dan Sullivan, who runs it, he, he makes this comment that, you know, every, like a vision, as an entrepreneur, our natural desire is to take something difficult, like a boulder, and get it moving. And once we've got it moving, hiring people to keep that boulder moving, and we're going to find another boulder. It's that's just, a great example. That's, that's who we are. That's how we're wired. Yeah. You're you're totally right. That is how we're wired. That for sure. How has um how has COVID affected you and your business? It's been it's in New York. It's been very challenging here. And so I wonder oh, yeah. how it's affected you guys in Arizona. You're so hot out there. Uh, Who knows whether it happened or not? <laughs> you know, I can say overall as a market, our our sales went down uh, as a traditional real estate market. You know, uh, I think our sales slid about 25, 30 percent uh, okay. from April, between April and March, and that's never happened in, in my lifetime. Right, okay. so it's a big deal, but prices have gone down. Um, our wholesaling slowed down a little bit because the buyers disappeared, but that just meant that we started taking more properties down. So we bought more properties. Yeah. Um, so we've been able to uh, uh, zigzag as necessary, uh, thankfully, because of the relationships we built and because of our credibility for how long we've been doing this. You know, for us, when we need money, thankfully, it's just a couple of calls. It's not like Oh man, where am I gonna find money? So, right. Uh, right. so even though I don't have a great portfolio of, of private lenders, I can find it fairly quickly uh, with, with our track record. Uh, yeah. So for us, it hasn't affected us. As a matter, of fact, our business is booming uh, because of all the extra time. You know, I'm not driving around as much. I'm not socializing as much. So I actually bought a lot of time back into my weekly schedule. So I've been incredibly productive. That's an interesting, you know, I'd never thought of it that way before, Steve. That's very true. I was, I'm going to do a post uh, this week about um, about emotional bank accounts and how I've been able to actually refill mine again. I'm going to do a post about that on my on Facebook and whatnot because of having this time. I never thought of it just the way you said you bought time back with this because, yeah, you're not, you know, you miss you miss some of that socializing and stuff that you do, but you're able to fill it with other things if you choose to do that. Some people choose right. bad stuff. Some people, some people like us, try try and choose good stuff all the time. Yeah, you can watch Netflix, right? Uh, but no, you can. <laughs> How much, right? Guys like us yeah. can't. We can't do that too long. I can do a little <laughs> bit here and there, but after a while, I'm like, I gotta do something. I can't sit still. So, have yeah. you guys had to go to a like? Are you on lockdown out there? No, uh, I mean we had, you know, uh, we wouldn't call it lockdown. We had like a, you know, stay home order, shelter in place. You know, I think for uh, probably about a month, maybe five weeks. So you don't have uh, that now? No, I can, I'm getting a haircut in a couple of days. Like my hair is crazy long. Like I'm getting a haircut in a couple of days. We can go yeah. eat in restaurants right now. Yeah, we. You're eating. You guys are eating in restaurants. Yeah, we're. So we're. You watch the news. We're in New York. We're in so New York. We're up, a whole other. Uh, New York's like Italy. Oh, uh, you know the pro the problem is is that where we are. Upstate New York, I'm I'm two and a half hours outside the city, and most people yeah. think New York's one big city. It's not, obviously it's not, but it's yeah. you know New York City is a whole different animal. But our governor, who lives who lives 15 minutes from my house, he they keep us shut down upstate. We've had less than 100 deaths up here, and you think you think it was Armageddon up here? So yeah, no businesses can't open. We we're allowed to be open because we're an essential business because of we we've got about 40 rental units that we have on top of everything else that we do. And um, so we were able to kind of stay open because of that. They're not really in a police state where they have a national guard here, but it kind of feels like they're close. You know, it kind of feels like, you know. It, it, well, and I try to explain this to, you know, people that will listen, because um, I think everyone's kind of forcing their ways, unfortunately. But the people that will listen, like you can't compare anywhere else in the country to New York City. Like everyone owns a car in Arizona. I know, like, I know. You don't have, you don't have. We've always complained about how we have a terrible mass transit system. Right now, I'm pretty happy about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. I agree. I, when this first started, I did, a, I did some posts that got a lot of traction, got thousands of views and hundreds of shares. It was like people, there's people saying, yeah, it's, I said, this is ridiculous. I said, we are not New York City. I said, you know, we are New yeah. York. We're not, we're, you know, literally, I grew up with cows in my backyard. That's 20 minutes from my office. You know, I grew up in the country. It's, I don't have cows in my backyard yeah. now, but but I live in the country, a dead end street. There's no, come on, you know. So it's so it's affected our business greatly here, and it's I'm glad it hasn't affected you. Other people in the country are like, yeah, what's the big deal? And I'm thinking, God, that's not how we feel here at all. It's we're 
We definitely the, oh, the no, government no. has their phone. Oh, uh, what, what city are you in? I'm in Al right up right up by Albany, a town called Schenectady, yeah. Rotterdam. Yeah. So I got a buddy in Rochester, and he's like, oh. man. And we were talking about like, um, you know, he was gonna fund one of my deals, and he was talking about how hard it was to send money over. It's like, why is it so hard? He's like, what do you mean? Like, why wouldn't it be hard? Everything shut down. I said, oh yeah, that's right. Right in our world, yeah, our whole state is like the yeah, Rochester's. What Rochester's six hours outside the city, and you think yeah. it was the worst thing ever. But anyway, whatever. So it's whatever. So I, I'm curious what um, your business now. So you didn't really have to work virtually then, because our business actually converted right to a virtual model, and ironically. We wanted to convert, we were wanting to, I wanted to for freedom and for flexibility. Mm -hmm. And so I could move where I wanted to and hire who I wanted to and find the best talent and not have to be stuck in an office. So yeah. I, we, we want to live in the ocean. That's really our, our ultimate goal is to get on the ocean. And um, so that was a sort of a blessing in disguise for that. And I'm wondering you're, you know, I know that my crystal ball is broken. I'm sure yours is too. But I mean, I wonder what you think about the future, how this is going to affect the economy going forward you know what do you how do you see it uh i can't speak on the economy you know um uh, i can speak on the real estate market and i think the real yeah. estate market is going to be totally fine uh because for us it's still supply and demand right supply is lower demand is lower but at the end of the day as long as demand is higher than supply we're going to be okay and yeah. that's what we that's what we have in arizona we had that before and we're going to continue to have it after uh so uh, i'm in several different masterminds and in the conversation yesterday the speculation, which I think is reasonable, is that the reason why uh, demand hasn't gone away is because all those buyers that weren't able to buy in these multiple offer situations were finally able to buy, mm -hmm. right? Like all the ones that kept getting screwed. You know, you got if you're a two hundred uh, if you're a two hundred thousand dollar FHA buyer, like good luck. You're not buying a house in this market. You're getting beat out by cash or someone putting thirty percent down. But for the last month and a half, your offer was viable, and that's what we saw. Yeah. Interesting. I wonder I wonder if you think that it will be more regionally affected. You know, because uh -huh. where we are, I'm not I mean everything's a little bit different, but I wonder what your thoughts are on regional, you know, again, there's still a lot of layoffs. There's still 30 million layoffs. And it's got that's gotta affect everybody at some point. So yeah, I wonder what I, you think I about think that. It is. I, I think it's definitely gonna be regional. I mean, I think if you look at New York specifically, right? You know, just outside of Manhattan, even if you guys weren't affected by deaths. You guys probably had a lot of. You guys probably know a lot more people affected by deaths. Sure. I don't know one. I don't know. Any, I don't know one person sick from the coronavirus, right? Yeah. Like, it's just a whole different world out here. So I think we're gonna get back to normal, and maybe things will change. My hope is that the sun kills the virus. Yeah. And if that's the case, our property value is gonna increase even more. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. What are your average prices out there? Out of curiosity, because you're you're. I thought Arizona was a higher average t ticket than we were I, what, what is your average ticket out there uh our median uh as of last month is 2.99.9 oh you're not that far off from us then we're about 220. yeah i thought for some reason i thought you were one of those higher price markets in phoenix but you're just a hot yeah. market we're just a hot market because um you know a lot of people come here because we have more jobs and we're employer friendly you know we like we like businesses and we like jobs we yeah. are not we don't have the luxury of crushing dreams and jobs like some of our states to the west of us or the east of you <laughs> yeah, yeah i I, uh, I i live in one of those states driving us nuts so um so let me let me start, let me start closing this so i told you it's a real estate of mind show and you mentioned um i want to know specifically what you've done so you've you've definitely done a lot of things to better yourself and you invested in yourself which I haven't met one entrepreneur yet that said, no, I never invested in myself because that's everyone who's successful, right? I, the ones who are failing, they've never invested in themselves, but the ones who are. They do everything. Yeah, 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 they were cocky, right? Yeah, funny how age will do that to you and also yeah, get kicked around a bit. But I'm curious what you do. Tell our listeners like specifically what you've done. Like, What are maybe your top three best things you think you've done that's that's moved you along the, the path? Yeah, so um, I am a... Um, Darren Hardy fanboy. Uh, every product he's had, I bought, including one last week. Um, so I've, I've adjusted all of his content, and he's just really someone that chases knowledge and then delivers it, kind of like Moses. Like he's going out there and he's collecting it, and then he's repackaging it and giving it in digestible format, which is kind of what I've done. It's kind of how I help build my brokerage. It's like I'm going out there learning and then providing it to my agents. 
Okay. Um, and so I would say high performance forum and same productivity are two I highly recommend. Um, and say those, uh, high say those, performance say those forum. Say those again for our listeners. Say those, say those again. High performance forum. Yep. That's about twelve thousand. Uh, insane productivity. That's about two thousand. Uh, okay. So once an event, once a three day event, oh, runs an online course. Okay, got it. Right. Yep. So, so those two, um, and then a strategic coach is amazing. I would have gotten more value out of it if I had not already been going through Darren Hardy's stuff. Yep. But it's awesome. And that one is 10K for uh, four, uh, four uh, events. Yep. And that's been incredibly powerful. And so these, the themes here is productivity and entrepreneurship, which is what I'm most passionate about. Yep. Um, you know, I think that a lot of us, we, we get into this business because, you know, we want more time and more money and more freedom. That's why we get into the business. And then we get in, into it and then we completely forget why we got into it. <laughs> right. <It happens. laughs> We're working 60, 70 hours a week. Like, you know, I saw a meme like only an entrepreneur will quit a 40 hour a week job <laughs> to work for 70 hours a week for less money. <laughs> less right? money or maybe no money. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so. Uh, but entrepreneurship done right, you created a business that serves you versus you being a slave to your company. And without the right entrepreneurial coach, it's going to be hard. And so like for us, you know, uh, being a CG, I just been in it for just a very short period of time. I already see how much smarter everyone else is in that room. And I can't be more excited to be in that situation. I, uh, Steve, I'll tell you, we, we joined the CG for your listeners. That's collective genius. That's the mastermind that we're in. And you got to do at least 50 deals a year to be in this group. And you go in that group kind of thinking, maybe, you know, some things and you sit down and you know, you, you have, so you haven't been to a group meeting yet. Right. So you get in these meetings yeah. and you go, huh? Okay. I guess I don't know shit. <laughs> you start, you sit yeah. back and start oh, realizing yeah. that there's, it's, it's very humbling. I think it's humbling even for the big boys. I think there's, you learn something new and oh, if, yeah. you, if you go into a group, you think you're doing it. You think you're yeah, you think you're doing stuff and you get there and go, Wow, I'm actually not doing nearly what I could be doing. But I think there if you go in there, if you if you can when you're doing these self development things, you've got to go in with a with a spirit of being humble. And you've got to go in not saying, Oh, I know that. You have to go in even for even for something that you think you know, there's probably a little tiny nuance that someone else is doing that might just you know that. It's so funny. You could be doing something and go, it's just not working, not working. And then you tweak one thing. And all of a sudden, it's like, you know, putting WD-40 on your kid's wheel. It's like, whoa, now we're going. And that's what the exactly, that's what exactly. masterminds do for you. So I think that's, I think it's so powerful. And yeah, you, I think, again, I'm pretty new to CG. I've only been to two meetings. This, this virtual one coming up here will be my third. But the first two were definitely a humbling kind of experience. And it, but I'm, but I've met so many people, and now I've met you, which is great. I know now we're friends, and it's it's good. When you when you sit and collaborate, and you have the that's one thing that we're gonna miss with the virtual stuff, right? It's the once we get back to getting together, because the networking piece, everybody's having drinks and dinner and talking, and learning from each other. That's pretty powerful stuff, and that's you're right. That's it's the entrepreneur the side stuff. of this that makes it great. The, the, the stuff you're talking about, the best the stuff you're talking about at one o'clock in the morning at the bar, that's the best stuff. It is. Yeah, it's the stuff that you're exhausted, but you're talking about and going, yeah, I can remember being at dinner and someone talked about a thing called an ovation agreement. That's something I've never done before. But then I heard, I was like, what is that? And then, you know, I learned a simple thing that has already has already yielded us several hundred thousand dollars in profits just by implementing this one thing. That's but awesome. if I hadn't been sitting at dinner that night, because a bunch of, bunch of them said, hey, come to dinner. I go, ah, you guys are, you guys, you guys go, they go. You're part of us now. Come to dinner. I'm like, okay. So we went to dinner and there. So you learn those things, but you've got to be, you got to be around people who know more than you, right? They, when Amber and I joined it, we had said, my I'm friends with Ken Corsini, and he said, he said, you're not in a mastermind. I said, no. He goes, how are you not in a mastermind? I go, I've never been invited. I just don't know. He took me in there, and I told Amber, I said, you know, because it's a big investment. You know, it's 25 grand or whatever. It's not cheap to be part of that. Plus your travel and everything else. And so you're, you know, you're you're into that for for a chunk. But I said, I said to Amber, I said, you know, if you're the smartest person in the room, you got to find a new room. I preach that, but I haven't been living it. So now I got to go find a new room. And I think that's, you know, that's yeah. been a big turning point for us too. So yeah, I can't, I can't be more excited. Yeah, that's great. Well, cool. Listen, so tell everybody again how they can 
you know, hook up with you and connect and follow you. Please tell everybody again, tell our listeners. Yeah. Uh, at steve.trang, S-T-E-V-E dot T-R-A-N-G. That's the best way to get a hold of me, and that's where I'm most responsive. I I can't say I'm responsive within 48 hours, yeah. but I always respond. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Awesome. Well, Steve, listen, thanks so much for ha- for being on the, on the show here today. I really appreciate it. It was great, and I hope to have you back again soon. So thanks, thanks very much. And everybody, thanks for being here on the Real Estate of Mind show, and we'll see you guys next week. Make sure you like and subscribe and leave us a review and leave us your questions and comments and we will personally answer and please share it to anyone you think could benefit. You can find us all over social media at Glenn and Amber Swarm. We'll see you next week.